So let's dive into target two. Since target one had a hard-coded password and it was found very easily, uh, the authors decided to hide the password a little bit. So let's take a look at check password and just look down and see what it's doing. Uh, so it's again doing some stack manipulation and uh, some moving. It does a jump. There's a comparison here and a jump not equal. That's uh, often indicative of a loop. Um, and then it's loading up some parameters and calling prompt and then it jumps to 4011 FA immediately after the prompt. So this will be what do we do with the password once it's entered in. And then if we go a little further we see uh, putting some more parameters together and calling prompt again. So this is similar to what we saw the first time and the previous prompt jumped down to 4011 FA which is immediately this prompt following this prompt so this is what happens uh, this is how the password gets processed and so it looks like it's loading uh, a variable off of the stack and it's loading something from program memory again it's relative to the instruction pointer and something called XOR password and there's something down here called XOR mask. So that suggests that uh, maybe the author has tried to hide the password by a simple XOR mechanism. Uh, we might look down to see if there's some place where it's doing an XOR and doing a comparison. Uh, so this, this might be uh, Well, there's different ways to do this. It could be XORing everything ahead of time, or it could be uh, XORing the password and then checking uh, against um, what the what the user entered. We might be able to figure that out if we go back up here. Let's see. Uh, R. Where does RAX get set? Uh, or ESI? One of those two. So. Uh, it's pulling whatever RAX points to, and RAX is pointing to something on the stack. Um, is that? Let's go back to prompt. Uh, when prompt gets called, it uh, prompt. So prompt two right here is probably the actual prompt string, and uh, ESI uh, has the value. 20 uh, okay minus 20 this is probably where the password is uh, in RDX so that's the third parameter to prompt it it might be uh, the password so then after we called prompt we put RAX the pointer to the users entered password into RAX and then we're putting that uh, into is that a pointer yeah that's a pointer to the user's password, we're putting that into um, relative, uh, the, this is a, a variable on the stack, so um, minus 30 relative to RBP, this is a variable. And uh, so if we remember that, um, and then the XOR password pointer to that is being put in another variable that's at 28 relative to the stack pointer, and then the XOR mask is being put at 38 relative to the stack pointer. So these are three variables. And then what we were doing, we're loading 30, which was the uh, XOR password, and we're loading 28, which is. Did we know what 20? Oh, 28. Oh, 28 is the XOR password, and 30 is. the user's password. Uh, so uh, 30 is the user password that's in RAX and uh, and then it's taking what's what that is pointing to so the first character pointed to by the um, variable and putting that in in ECX then it's loading the XOR password I went the wrong direction it's loading the XOR password 
and it's putting what it points to in ESI and then it's loading the XOR mask and uh, it puts that in RAX and then adds one to it stores that variable and uh, okay and e let's see ESI had the password let's see okay this is a little hard to follow but um, back up here remember R R30 has the the pointer to the user's password and that and and by indexing RAX here that's getting the first character in the password and it's putting in an ECX and that's a a large that's the the whole register but then if we look down here we're not doing anything with EC with ECX but we are comparing AL and CL and those are register names for just the rightmost byte of AL and CL and so it looks like we're taking the XOR password, we're XORing it with um, the XOR mask, and then comparing that with what the user typed in. So if we were to set a breakpoint here and run this and type foobar, and again it hangs, I hit tab, and we're at the comparison. And so let's see, RAX has 4F and RCX has 6-6 six, six. and let's see 6-6 six, six is an F and RAX is 4F and 4F is at a capital O so maybe I'm gonna start writing these down so we have capital O and I'm just gonna hit continue here and what I expect is not that. Oh, it probably failed because I typed in uh, the wrong first letter and so it immediately knew. So I know that the first word in the password is a capital O and so what next? OF. <laughs> and I hit enter and I hit tab and so now I'm back here and I'm comparing again. Now look, RAX and RCX both have 4F. So this is going to pass, but now the next time I go, uh, RAX has 70 and RCX has 66, which is the F I typed. And so obviously the second character is supposed to be uh, a hex 70, which is a P. So I'll go ahead and write down P. So right now I've got OP, and if I hit C, invalid password, I know the first two are O and P. O and lowercase p. I'm going to guess open. Why not? And so now, again, RAX is 4F, RCX is 4F, so that's good. Next time, RAX is 70, the lowercase p, and RCX is 70, lowercase p, that's good. Third time, hey, I guess something right. Uh, the N is correct. And if I go again, so open. Uh, O-P-E-N was correct so far, but now if I continue again, nope, oh, the unlock failed. So obviously the next, uh, the next character was wrong. So this is going to be a lot of tries through uh, stepping through this point, trying to figure out whether I got it right. Is there an easier way to do this? There probably is. Remember, we were able to find the hard-coded password just by examining the code. And also remember that when we were looking at check password, uh, we saw two variables called XOR mask, uh, XOR password, and XOR mask. So XOR password, it says that is at 404050, and the XOR mask is at 404040. So I'm going to view memory at 404040. 40. So that's so if I'm guessing right, XOR mask is here, this 1293F4 and so forth. 
and um, at 4050 this is the XOR password and uh, it goes it's one two it's at 10 characters and look the XOR mask is longer so I don't know if that matters so what we can do with that I'm gonna bring over a couple tools here one is this calculator and the other is uh, a table that's if you type on Linux man 7 ASCII and go down a little bit you get this table and the table on the left is a, a hex table and so oh, I need this to be let me shrink the window just a little bit so we can see the I uh, can't shrink it I'll just have to ah there we go so I'm gonna type in 12 93 F4 2 E I'm gonna I think I can do seven, uh, eight characters safely without it going into scientific mode. 35A082. So what I've typed in here are the first eight bytes uh, from on, on 404040. And now I'm going to tell it to XOR that with the first eight bytes at 404050, which is 5D E3 Five three zero six eight four C two, and I'm gonna hit equal, and I look at the result. Now, one of the things I'm looking for here is I don't want to see for each every two digits. I want the first digit to be less than eight. If if this is gonna actually be the password, so four is good. Seven, six, six, two, three. Two and four, so that's a good sign uh, because the ASCII characters uh, are all below hex 80. At least the the standard, yeah, the standard ASCII characters are. Um, and so I can look at this table, uh, and I already know I should expect that four F is O, which we already knew. And let's see, the next one is seven zero seven zero is P, and. The third one is 65, which is E, and then 6E was N. So after 6E is 24. 24 is a dollar sign, so we have open dollar sign. And 33 is a 3. And 24, that was another dollar sign. And then 40 is an at sign. Okay, so that was all the the first eight bytes, and so then the rest of the password uh, is there's only two more um, in the in the password part. It was 20 and 24, and I want to XOR that with the next two. That that I got that 20 and 24 here because remember 404050 is the password. And then um, I want to XOR that with 4D17. So um, 4D17 equals, and again, first digits of the bytes are less than 8, so that's good. 6D is an M. And the last one is 33, which is a 3. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to tell it to continue. And the letters that I figured out were O, P, E, N, dollar sign 3, dollar sign at M3. So that's sort of uh, hacker, sp hacker speak writing for open sesame. And if I hit enter, the unlock succeeded. Whew. So it was a little clever to, to use XOR to hide the password so that you couldn't see it in the plain text. But as you can see, you can figure out the password without even having to set breakpoints if you just uh, uh, figure out what the code is doing and then you can just perform the XOR yourself. So maybe there's a better way to do this.